transcribed earlier for release to our West Coast audience at this more convenient listening time. Central Operational Headquarters, Commander Dystra speaking. This morning at 400 hours, our electronic scanners picked up on oscillator frequency an unidentified spacecraft in Sector K beyond the gravitational field of the planet Mars. Our calculations indicate that this craft will arrive in Space Sector G within the next 24 hours. Emergency directions to all defense units. Coordinate high-voltage destroyers to cover Area G. All units on alert for assault action. To learn what happened when a strange craft from outer space came into Sector G, listen in a moment to 2000 Plus. Adventures in the World of Tomorrow. Dramatic stories of science fiction from the years beyond 2000 A.D. Today, the strange adventure of men who dared the unknown through interplanetary space. Worlds apart. And one thing more, Johnson. Your new Alimoid space suit has been tested and it's everything you claimed it to be. Light, pliable, fireproof, a splendid product. We'll want 50 of them in time for the next space flight three weeks from now. Can you make it? Excellent. Good luck, Johnson. Yes? Your son is here, Mr. Granger. He wants to see you. Jim here? Well, tell him I can. Oh, all right, send him in. Yes, sir. And Miss Ames, tell Roberts he can start punching tape for the mechanical pilot on flight 17. Yes, Mr. Granger. Hello, Dad. How are you, Jim? Dad, I've come to ask a favor of you. Uh, a big favor. Well, talk fast, son. I'm very busy. Uh, what is it you want? I want to be assigned to Flight 17. What? Flight 17? To Neptune? Well, are you crazy? No, Dad. I, I've been thinking about this for months. Well, you can stop thinking about it right now. There's no opening for you, son. I, I happen to know there is, Dad. Golding's down with a bad case of acceleration bends. They'll need a new rocket engineer. But you're too young, too green. I've done 42 experimentals and three moon hops. I'm ready. Ready? Well, this is an uncharted trip, Jim, a trailblazer. You know what happened to the first flight to the moon, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Crashed on the lip of a giant crater. Yes, and the first ship that tried to reach Mars. Went haywire and shot off into deep space. And still you want to make this first flight to Neptune? Yes, sir. Well, you have courage, son. I'll say that. But you're not going. Why not? Jim, it's not up to me. Captain Roberts chooses his own rocket engineer. You know, all I do is okay the man he selects. Then I guess I'll be making the flight, Dad. You see, I persuaded Captain Roberts to select me. <laughs> Captain Roberts on spaceship Phoenix on flight to Neptune, calling Marshal Granger, control station two. Roberts calling Granger. Are we still in contact? Roberts calling Granger. Do you read Granger, us? Granger, control station two. We read you, Roberts. We're still in contact. Go ahead, Roberts. Ready to report, sir. Proceed. At the end of 120 hours of flight, conditions are entirely normal. Crew and passengers have passed safely through five accelerations. We are cruising now at a speed of 12 galactic miles per second. Excellent, Roberts. Continue. Astrogation reading. Take it, Sandy. Astrogator Lawson reporting. Our position in space-time units, 17 hours, 4 minutes to the Mars-Jupiter axis, sector G. 23 degrees off the plane of the ecliptic. Exactly on course, Lawson. Well done. Rocket control. Take it, Jim. Rocket engineer Granger reporting. Average rocket discharge rate, 12.7. Consumption level, 19%. Available supply, 300 hours with B2 safety factor. Good work, son. Congratulations, all of you. Keep it up. Thank you, sir. Signing off. 
Hi. Everything okay back in the lounge, Jim? Oh, quiet a few minutes ago when I passed the room. How about that chess game? Are those two physicists still at it? Uh, <laughs> they're in no hurry. 50,000 miles to a move. Mm, real thriller. And uh, the music lovers? Wearing a groove in Beethoven's fist. You know, I don't see how anybody... Dick. Yes. Watch your controls, pal. We've been swinging off course. Off course? Well, you're nuts, lad. I haven't taken my eye off the chart for a second. We've been right on the line. I'm telling you, we're off course, Dick. Six points. Better bring her back. You sure, Sandy? Am I sure? Oh, sorry, Sandy. Stupid question. Stand by for directional correction. Standing by. Lateral deviation, 6.2. Speed, 12. Magnetic index, gamma 5. Port side and auxiliary rockets, 5, 7, 13, 15. Ready to discharge. Discharge. Well, that's that. I still don't understand. Wait a minute, Dick. Something wrong. Huh? Wrong? What do you mean? We're off again. What are you talking about? We swung in the line for a second, then we pulled right out again. Oh, but that's impossible, Sandy. There isn't any wind drift or current out here in space. Anything in motion moves in a straight line until it comes within the magnetic field of some body. That's what I'm afraid of, Dick. I think we're caught in the toe of some tremendous mass. Oh, what mass, Sandy? The sun, Mars, Jupiter, everything's where it belongs, isn't it? There aren't any unknown bodies floating about? Maybe there are. Maybe the... Like what, Sandy? A comet. A comet? Yeah, a comet. That's what it must be. A wild, uncharted comet from outer space. Look, Dick. The atmosphere gauge is way up. We're not flying through a vacuum. There's something else out there now, some sort of atmosphere. Gas. Hot gases forming the tail of the comet. You're right, Sandy. Listen. Hot gases and other things, too. Sounds like pellets of some kind. Stones. They're fragments. Meteorites. All trailing behind the comet. We're caught, Dick. Caught right in the middle of it. The ship is moving in its bend. We'll be dragged clean out of the solar system, perhaps out of the galaxy. Oh, maybe not, Sandy. There's one chance. Maybe we can blast ourselves free. Alert. Alert. All personnel to emergency acceleration couches. Prepare to discharge all port side rockets. Yeah, you know what you're doing? 127 rockets going off at once. You'll, you'll blow us a bit. Our only chance, Jim. Here goes. Five seconds. Discharge. Ranger, control tower, calling spaceship Phoenix. Ranger, calling Phoenix. Come in, Phoenix. Ranger to space patrol, special alert. Spaceship Phoenix bound for Neptune, missing 12 hours. May be lost or out of control. All units stand by to intercept signals, if any. Frequency, 40,000. Relay any information to Marshal Granger, control tower 2. That is all. Where are you, son? Where are you? Sandy, get up. Come on, man. I I'll give... No. Sandy. Dead. Dick, you're all right. Thank God. Yes, Jim, I I'm all right. But Sandy... I, uh, I know. Head cracked against the control panel. Three passengers are dead, but we're out of it, Dick. Something threw us clear of the comet, some centrifugal force. Help me up, Jim, quick. I give me the control panel. Take it easy, Dick. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh my head. Jim, Jim, how's the power plant? Half the rocket engines are out. And the boosters seem to be okay. Good. we got enough to operate on. Maybe. What do you mean? The nuclear overdrive is shot. Shot? Smacked by a meteorite. Jim, we've got to find out where we are. We can't afford to waste a unit of power. Do you know anything about astrogation? Not a thing. Beyond the moon, I'm lost. Oh, that's great. A crippled ship lost somewhere in space and a dead astrogator to show us the way. I'll have to make a wild stab at our position. 
What's your guess, Dick? Well, how can I guess? We may be near Neptune or way out near some far-off galaxy. Let's take a crack at that radio relay. Maybe we're... Uh, I've been trying all along. Can't raise a thing. I'll keep trying. It's our only chance. Okay. I'll take a look through the port, see if I can make out anything. Spaceship Phoenix calling Earth stations Mars, Jupiter, Earth. Spaceship Phoenix. Are we coming through? Can't recognize a star, a planet, an astro body. Jim? Spaceship Phoenix. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? How long is it since we blanked out? Can't say, Dick. All our instruments went haywire. Spaceship Phoenix, flight 17 for Neptune in distress. Are we coming through? Answer us. We may have... Dick, listen. Spaceship Phoenix, you are coming through. We hear you. We've got him. They heard it. No, no, it can't be. Give me that mic. Hello? Hello? This is Space Flight 17. We're off our course and badly damaged. Our position unknown. We have located your position, Spaceship Phoenix. Stand by, please. Jim, that's Earth. We have blown or sucked the world right back toward Earth. Hello, Phoenix. Are we still coming through? Like music, sir. Very well. We're going to bring you in on a beam if you're within range. Does the signal reach you? Please acknowledge. Got you. Got you perfectly. Good. Set your degravitators and disengage all engines. We're in free flight, sir. Instruct all personnel to get into acceleration compensators. You will land at our spaceport in approximately four hours. One hundred feet. Prepare for landing. Granger to engine room. Landing jets fore and aft. Discharge. Fifty feet. Release airlock. Switch on landing lights. Ten feet. Prepare to land. Contact. Cut motors. Ah, we've landed, Jim. We made it. <laughs> Don't I know it? Come on, pal. Out you go. Oh, take your time. We're in no rush now. You may not be, but I am. In a rush to get down at this good old terra firma. Oh, boy, does this air smell good. What a spaceport, Jim. I didn't know we had anything anywhere that looked like this. <laughs> I don't care what it looks like. All I know is that... Oh. comes someone. Hello. Hello there. I'm Captain Roberts of the Phoenix. Are we glad to see you? Stand where you are. Hey, what's the idea? Well, you don't understand. I, I said I'm... Captain... Don't move. Captain Roberts, you and your crew and your passengers are all under arrest. Elf and Smith, take over the ship and seal all the exits. No one is to leave. Captain Roberts, you and your companion come this way, please. By what authority are we being held prisoners? I want to know. I have the right to demand to know. Captain Roberts, you are hardly in a position to demand anything. Well, what is my position, sir? The title is Commander. Commander Dyster. Commander? Commander, you know that you will be held responsible for any harm to my passengers or ship. There's no cause for alarm, Captain, or threats. Simply holding you here at Green Valley for a short while till we check your credentials. You've inspected our ship. You know we carry no contraband. Since when does an American have to have his credentials checked in his own country? I've already explained to you that this entire area, all 500 square miles of it, is government property, devoted exclusively to secret research projects. Now, oh, is it perfectly obvious why we can't allow you and your passengers to walk about freely? Maybe, but it isn't obvious why we're not allowed to use the visiphone. Why we can't call our base, report our safe landing. Perhaps not, Captain Roberts. But then... Government regulations often are obscure. Commander Dyster, we were met with guns and suspicion. Now, you say that was because secret research is going on. Yet when you contacted us above the Earth's atmosphere, you offered to bring us in here. Why did you make that offer if you didn't want us here? Would you rather be back in space, floundering about in your crippled craft? That can be arranged. You haven't answered my question. 
We brought you in for two reasons. First, to save your lives if you turned out to be harmless. Second, because it is our policy to apprehend all craft entering our space sector. We have enemies. Well, the high-handed methods you use, I can see why. Not high-handed, Captain Roberts. During your detainment here, you and your company will be accorded full courtesy. We appreciate your courtesy, but we demand the right to contact Chicago here, now, and on that visit phone. I'm sorry, that is impossible. Donna. Yes, Commander Dyster? Arrange for suitable accommodations for Captain Roberts and his crew. The interview is closed. Commander Dyster, I... I... That is all, Captain! Send out a special bulletin to the Science Institute, to all chiefs of the following departments, astrogation, navigation, anthropology, astronomy. Is there anywhere in this solar system or in adjoining constellations a body known as planet Earth or America? Is there any community, area, or experimental station known as Chicago? <laughs> Do it, Dick. I won't take this lying down. No? What are you going to do about it? I'll think of something. I'm certainly not going to sit around twiddling my thumbs while the great Dystra checks our credentials. I don't like the looks of this place any better than you do. Sacred project, he says. For all we know, it may be the headquarters of some gangster out there. There are a lot of things about this Green Valley setup that bother me. Nothing definite. I, I, I just get a feeling that everything's a little lopsided. As if I were looking at it through a, a Coney Island mirror. Oh, easy now, Jim. You'll be going bats if you... Dick, I've got it. Got what? That visiphone. If we can get into Dystra's office some way, we can phone home. Oh, no, no. You're way off, Jim. There isn't a chance in a million. Why not? This room's not locked. They finished work for the day. We saw everybody leave. All right. All right, we'll try it. But, Jim, uh, watch your step, will you? I feel sort of responsible for you. <laughs> the office. So far, so good. Try the door. Uh, open. Inside, fast. It's very dark in here. But... Oh, now, where was that visit phone? Oh, it's right here. Put the call in, but don't light the scanning cone. I'll use this pocket flash. You listen for anyone approaching. Here goes. Your call, please. Get me Marshal Granger in Chicago. Chicago? Where is that? Chicago, Illinois, USA. Come on, operator. U.S.A.? What place is that near? Didn't you hear me? I said U.S.A. I will check it, sir. If you... Come on, come in, Jim. Drop it quick. We'd better get out. There's two ladies in the car to stand back here in the corner. Hello? Hello? Someone is here. Please come forward. I know you are here. I can hear your heart beats. There are two of you there in the back. Please come forward. Oh, this is very childish. Mm, Now, that is better. Now, we can put on the lights. Good evening, Commander Dyster. Captain Roberts. Congratulations, sir. A very impressive trick, hearing a heartbeat across a 40-foot room. Trick? Not at all, sir. If it seems strange to you, your hearing must be impaired. You know why we're here, I suppose. It's obvious. We're trying to use the visiphone against orders. You gentlemen have abused your privileges as guests. From now on, you will be held prisoners under lock and key. I've brought you your food, gentlemen. It's about time. Well, this is a fancy touch. A woman jailer. My name is Dorna, Captain Roberts. I'm Commander Dystra's assistant. We just remembered you hadn't had any food tonight. Uh, That's very touching. Thank you very much. Take it easy, Jim. She's just carrying out orders. Dorna, it was very kind of you to bring us this food, but uh, there's something we need even more. What is it? 
We need some information. We're going mad. Well, if there's anything I can tell you... Anything. You could start talking now and continue all night. First, where is this place? Where are we? You're in Green Valley, Captain. Green Valley, Green Valley. Where is Green Valley? What continent is it on? What is it bounded by? I... I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Uh, you're wasting your breath, Dick. She won't talk. Uh, then, uh, tell me this. How long have you been here? All my life. I was born here. Fifty-seven years ago. Fifty? You look like twenty. How old is Dyster? Ninety-two. And he can hear a heartbeat at 40 paces? Ah, uh -huh. my hearing is even better. Listen. Do you hear the dogs barking in the distance? Nuts. If these people are a terrific hoax, or we've wandered into some weird, out-of-this-world madhouse. Good night, Donna. Good night, gentlemen. I wouldn't try anything foolish. Shangri-La. Yes, that's where we must be. The place someone wrote about back in the 20th century. If you ask me, Granger. it's probably the place. Yes, 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 listen. Huh? Granger. Roberts. The window. There's someone below. Hello there. Who is it? It's me, Reynolds. Reynolds, the chess-playing physicist. Reynolds, how'd you get out? What are you doing down there? I escaped while the others distracted the guard. I'm making a dash for it. Dash for what, Reynolds? There's a small plane at the far end of the field. I spotted it this afternoon. Will you come with me? It's pitch black out there. You'll never find it. I'll find it if I have to feel my way. You're mad, Reynolds. We've got to get away, Roberts. Don't you understand? This place, it's, it's unnatural. I've seen things that have made my hair stand on... Now, a... Reynolds, listen to me. Don't go now. Perhaps tomorrow everything no, will be... No, not tomorrow now. Are you coming, Roberts? Ranger? Very well. When I come back with help, I hope you're still alive. Now, wait, Reynolds. Come back. He's gone. Oh, I hope he knows what he's doing. Dr. Reynolds, you are out of bounds. That's Deister. Come back, Dr. Reynolds. We cannot permit you to go any further. Last warning, Dr. Reynolds. Do not go near that plane. There isn't a light on anywhere. How do they know where Reynolds is? Station 7. Stop that man. I think you're foolish to refuse the food we've been sending you. You haven't eaten all day. Please put it down, Dawn, and go away. Commander Dyser wishes me to express his regrets. The injury to Dr. Reynolds was most unfortunate. Tell Commander Dyser he'll pay for this. Tell him I said... The electronic beam merely paralyzes temporarily. It leaves no permanent mark. Dr. Reynolds will recover. How did they manage to hit him in the dark? Well, I... I don't understand... We see very well in the dark. Well, good night, gentlemen. Please eat your food. Commander Dystra will be offended if you don't. Mustn't offend Dystra, must we? Well, here goes this tray out of... Him, Wade. It's foolish, really. We'll only get weak if we don't eat. Too weak to help ourselves if an opportunity comes along. Yeah, I guess you're right. Feel a little lightheaded already. Yeah, hand me that jug of milk. Oh, here you are. Pour one for me, too, will you? Three days we've been here. He could have checked our credentials a dozen times. Yeah, happy landing. Ah, uh, madam's uh, uh, Jim, look out. Yeah. What is it, Dick? Why'd you knock the glass out of my hand? Did you see the color of that milk? Green. Green? Green milk? Poison, that's all I can think of. Of course. Please eat your food, she kept saying. Come on, let's open that window and get rid of this tray. Here goes compliment to Jim Gregg. <laughs> Well, well, what? When is it going to land? I didn't hear a sound. Did you see it as it went down? That heavy metal tray, that big jug, the glasses, they they didn't fall, Jim. They, they sort of floated down. As if, as if somebody had messed around to the force of gravity. They reduced the pull of the earth here at Green Valley, Dick. Maybe that's one of their secret projects, uh, an anti-gravitational force. Dick. Dick, I'm going to find out. What are you climbing up on that windowsill for? Well, if it works for a tray full of dishes, why won't it work for me? I'm going to jump out, Dick. There's only one way to find out. Take a big jump. Just walking around doesn't give the answer. It's three stories. You'll land smack on those rocks below. Well, if I make it, you follow. And if I don't... I don't do it. Ah, wait, don't jump. Hold on, Dick. I'll be seeing <laughs> Jim, you there? Here I am, Dick. 
we made it all right. I can't believe it. You hurt? <laughs> Just a bruise. It was like it was like a jolt at the end of a parachute jump. I think I'm going out of my mind, Jim. All those 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 fantastic things that have happened since we landed here. The visiphone operator who never heard of Chicago or the USA. And Dyster can hear a heartbeat across the room. And see in the dark. Donna, 57 years old, looking like a chorus girl. Green milk. And a reduced gravitational pull. I don't like it. I want to get out. And there's our ship out in the middle of the spaceport, prepared and ready to go. Yeah, maybe we could... Dick. I just noticed something. Yeah? Last night when Randall... Last night it was pitch dark, but now... Now there's a full moon. What's so strange about that? Take another look at that sky. There. Over the rim of the horizon. Another moon. A second moon. What fools we've been. Don't you see what this means? We're not on the Earth at all. We've landed on some alien planet. We must get to Dystra at once. <laughs> Yes, that is it. That explains the things that puzzled us. Your reference to Chicago, to the Earth. The small, strange differences between us. It's not the differences that bother me now, Dystra. It's the uncanny, incredible similarity between your planet and ours. Is it so incredible, Captain Roberts? We've shown you our astronomical charts. Our planet Vesta is exactly opposite the Earth on the other side of the sun. Yeah, that's why we never discovered each other. We are 90 million miles distant from the sun. You are... 93 uh, million miles. But no doubt both planets split off from the sun at the same time. Vesta is a little smaller than the Earth, and, and that fact, plus its nearer distance to the sun, gives us less gravity, but otherwise our development has paralleled yours completely. Even in appearance and in culture and language. You've reached precisely the same stage of development we have. Which simply proves, Granger, that similar conditions may produce the same results. One thing still bothers me. Yes? How do you stay so young, so vigorous? <laughs> that, it is simple. We live in peace and harmony. Our only concern is interplanetary threats. <laughs> That's why you were so... so rough on us. Precisely. Well... Now that we understand each other, may I use your visiphone? You want to call Chicago? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I want to call our crew and passengers and tell them to get ready for the journey home. Next week, an incredible adventure from the world of tomorrow when a scientist crosses the border of what is known into the strange mysteries of the unknown. Be sure to listen.